this is Herman Brooks. Herman is just like the rest of us. Every day, he has to make all kinds of decisions. Like what to wear, whom to date, and when to panic. Now, these decisions should be easy. But if you take a look inside Herman's head, you'll see why he sometimes has trouble making up his mind. I'm Herman's intellect. Without me, he couldn't hold his job, pay his rent, or tie his shoes. I'm Herman's sensitivity. Without me, he wouldn't feel tenderness, honesty, or love. The good things in life. I'm Herman's anxiety, and I keep him out of trouble. And believe me, there's trouble everywhere. I'm Herman's lust. Without me, he'd miss out on all the good stuff. You know, fun, food, babes. Sometimes they agree. Usually they don't. But this struggle is going on inside all of us. And it's all going on inside Herman's head. I'll check that for you. Please hold. Research. I'll check that for you. Please hold. Research. I'll check that for you. Please hold. Oh, Mr. Bracken, the 13th president of the United States, the senior editor of Waterton's New Science Magazine, and the lyricist to Bye Bye Birdie. Millard Fillmore, Paul Bracken, Lee Adams. Millard Fillmore, Paul Bracken, Lee Adams. <laughs> You're staring at me, sir, and I don't know if I can handle it. <laughs> Louise, did you pay attention to the answers to those last questions? Miller Fillmore, Paul Bracken. Mr. Bracken, it's you, it's you! You wrote the lyrics to Bye Bye Birdie! <laughs> no, Louise, I'm going to be senior editor of Waterton's newest publication. Oh, well, that's nice, too. <laughs> I cannot believe you kicked me and that woman out of the elevator. Herman, I wanted to be alone with that gorgeous guy. But the woman was blind. Hey, I let the dog stay. <laughs> Herman, Penny, there's wonderful news. Mr. Bracken is going to become editor of Waterton's new magazine. Well, that's great, sir. Yeah, can you believe it, Herman? After 20 years of bringing my back in research, I'm finally getting the opportunity of a lifetime. Uh, I can't believe it's happening. It's not fair. It's just not fair. You can't leave now, Mr. Bracken. Well, thank you for the sentiment, Hetty. You're in a half of sucking up right down the toilet. Trying to be working, blaming others, complimenting him on those butt-ugly ties, all wasted. By the way, I'll be turning the research room over to one of you. I haven't decided who. Handsome tie, sir. <laughs> thank you, Hetty. In keeping with company policy prior to my promotion, you're all expected to fill out this evaluation of me. Now, take your time, and remember, this is very important to Mr. Waterton. This is our chance to help Mr. Bracken. Paul Bracken is intelligent, wholeheartedly dedicated, and an inspiration to us all. Now, wait a minute. If we turn in nothing but fawning praise, it'll be dismissed as rubbish. We have to put in a little something negative so it looks honest. Mr. Bracken is a bit gruff at times. Hey, what are we doing? Evaluating Mr. Bracken. Well, I guess he's cute, but come on, he's a guy. <laughs> One more thing. I've been giving some thought how to decide which of you should take over this office. May I suggest that you go primarily on the basis of look? <laughs> no. What I want to do is have each of you run the office for a few hours today. I'll observe and see who does the best job. Louise, you'll go first. Run the office. Run the office, right. <laughs> How do I run the office, Herman? Why not start by assigning out the work? Assign the work, right. Okay, who wants to check an article called Outboard Motors from A to Z? Okay, I'll take that one. <laughs> Who'll take the death knell of deconstructionism? Okay, I'll do that one, too. Anybody for the history of pants? Well, I'm going to be busy today. Louise, this is your office now. He wants you to take charge. I can't do that with him here. This is your office, sir. Then pretend it's not. I have to be able to evaluate your performance as a boss. If it helps, pretend I'm another one of your employees. Motors, Bracken, coffee. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Mr. Bracken, line four. Louise's 
in charge now. Give it to her. Anything they want from me, they can get from her. Hello, this is Louise. I'm in charge now. Mr. Bracken insists that anything you want from him, you can get from me. <laughs> you heard me. I'm in charge now. What do you want? <laughs> Consider it done. Mr. Bracken, if I'm late coming back from lunch, it's because your wife wants me to swing by your house for a quickie. <laughs> what you say. Hard work isn't everything. Looks count, damn it. Well, you can't just rely on looks, Hetty. Oh, yeah? Hey, Anson. Come here. How'd you like to buy me lunch? You bet. Good. Take this up front and pay it. <laughs> Try doing that with hard work. Well, you think Bracken's gonna give you that job? Be better after the evaluation I wrote. <laughs> Boy, did I lay it on thick. About how wonderful he is, what a great boss he's been. You didn't say anything negative? Of course not. No one writes anything negative in those evaluations. You didn't write anything negative, did you, Herman? Well, me? No. No, I just thought you might have. <laughs> Excuse me a minute, will you, Hattie? Yeah, sure, you say that now, but if I ever do become the last man on Earth, we'll see you as the last laugh. <laughs> Hey there, Herm. Hey, Jay, you know those evaluations Watterson likes to have employees fill out for their bosses? It wouldn't be a big deal if I wrote that, that Bracken tends to be a little gruff, would it? No, it would just destroy his career. Oh, Herm, you're kidding, right? We've just ruined a man's life. I'm holding you personally responsible for this, mister. Put in a little something that's negative so it looks honest. Perhaps you're right. Perhaps it was an error in judgment. Miss, I'm so sweet it makes me want to puke! <laughs> I said one slightly negative thing. Everything else was positive. It can't really be that big a deal. Waterton has a thing about those evaluations being totally free of criticism. Everybody knows that. Well, I didn't know that. How are you supposed to know that? It's one of those unwritten rules. Gee, you just fall off the turnip truck or something? <laughs> I wasn't raised to think that way, Jay. I'm just a straightforward guy from Ohio. Well, this is New York, Hermo. If you want to survive, you don't tell anyone the truth. You don't get involved. You don't wear hats with your flaps. <laughs> What can really happen with this evaluation thing? I said Bracken was a little gruff. He is a little gruff. What can happen? When Mortar was evaluated, somebody said that he was a little impatient, right? Boom, Waterton fired him. I bought a hot dog from him yesterday. <laughs> you know, come to think of it, when I asked for extra mustard, he did get a little impatient. <laughs> Great, so my evaluation's gonna be Bracken fired. Just because I'm from Ohio doesn't mean you can take advantage of me like that. <laughs> oh, I think it does. <laughs> Let's get some work done, people. What is this, a cocktail party? I don't think so. Enjoying your power, Louise? It's coursing through my veins, sir. But it doesn't feel right for me to sit at my old desk. Could I use your office? Louise, I don't but think... But you said you have to be able to evaluate my performance as a boss, and I can pretend you're just another employee. I said that, huh? You could just sit at my desk. Thanks. <laughs> Research. 607. Research. Grover Cleveland. Research. The Green Iguana. Good work, Paul. You know, this boss thing is easy. It looked much harder when you did it. I didn't have the people under me that you do, Louise. Louise. Very well, Ms. Fitzer. Sorry, it's Now get back to work, Bob. I'll have your butt in a sling. <laughs> ah, it's lonely at the top. But God, I love the view. Louise. <laughs> Miss Fitzer. Are those evaluations we filled out this morning still in Mr. Bracken's office? It's my office now, Brooks, and yes, they are. Thank you for reminding me. Mr. Bracken, I'm digging a tunnel under my desk. We break out at 7. <laughs> Paul, these evaluations have to go up to Waterton's office. You don't let me do that. No, no. I want Paul to do it. Paul? Very well. I'll take those up to Waterton's office for you right away, Ms. Fitzer. Thank you. Come on, let's go after him and get that evaluation back. Why bother? Why bother? Don't you care about Mr. Bracken? I do the thinking. Caring's not in my department. 
That's it. You caused nothing but trouble saying Bracket is gruff was your idea to begin with. You are part of our mind. We should stop listening to. What are you saying? I'm saying we can do fine without you. You're fired. <laughs> well? So, shall we see about Mr. Bracken's evaluation? I told you he's a guy. This is very important. All right, all right. Bracken's evaluation. I'll give him a two. <laughs> Mr. Bracken, Mr. Bracken, you really shouldn't have to take these upstairs. Let me do it. Frau Fitzer asked me to take them. It was my idea to put each of you in charge for a little while. I'll live with the consequences. Jay, Jay, I need you to help me. I am desperate. Sure, pal. What's your name? No, it's not a woman. It's Mr. Bracken. A little old for you, isn't he, huh? Jay, this is serious. He has the evaluations now. I'll distract him. You try to get mine. Got it, got it. Hi there, I'm Jay. How you like me so far? <laughs> okay, so far so good. Now what's the plan? I got it. We pretend the elevator jerks. Yeah, yeah. And we lose our balance, we start to fall. Good, good. So we reach out, we grab that woman's breast and cop a field. <laughs> I have had it with you. You're fired. Go sit with him. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so what do we do over here? We sit on our butts and we do nothing. Great! That's what I used to do over there. Rack, is that a spot on your sleeve? I don't see anything. Looks like it's got a permit. I don't see a spot. Permit? Hey, hey. Well, I'll get those, sir. Permit, is something wrong? I'm just not myself, sir. You know the news that you're leaving it just has me. Sir, what's the word? Deranged. Here you go, Mr. Bracken. Thank you. I'll drop these off in Waterton's office. So, uh, I'll call you. Did you get it? Oh, you bet. It's a phone number. Not bad, huh? Jay, you were supposed to get my evaluation. Oh, I knew I forgot something. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My evaluation is going to get Bracken fired. He's going to end up on the streets competing with Murtaugh for the hot dog trade. You know what this means? Cheaper hot dogs? No choice. I've got to go back up there and get that evaluation out of Waterton's office before he reads it. Herman, that ship has sailed. Bracken is going to get fired, but he'll never know it was you. You go up to Waterton's office, you're just going to get in big trouble. Oh, you're right, Jay. I guess I just have to accept it. Okay, now you're being practical. Accept it? Well, I certainly don't think we should get fired. What about Bracken? Better him than us. That's it. You're fired. Oh, wow! <laughs> Fine! But don't come crying to me when you need someone to... Come crying. <laughs> Hi, guys. Oh, look, the wimp is here. Good to see you. How you doing, little buddy? Now the fun begins. <laughs> you hear that? The wimp is here. I'm liked. Give me a drink. Give me a towel. And then get lost. I'm not well liked, but I'm liked. <laughs> okay. Louise's reign of terror is now officially over. Where do you go next? But wait, I still have reforms to implement. Restructuring to supervise my work here is not done. Oh, yes, it is, Louise. Now get out of my office. Okay, I'll step down for now, but I'll be back. <laughs> Eddie, if you'd like to work out of my office, I'll sit at your desk and pretend to be you. So let me just say, you look absolutely lovely in that outfit. <laughs> Bracken, that's so nice of you. <laughs> Penny, you brought that? He was just sucking up like you do. No, Herman, you don't understand. I do look lovely in this outfit. <laughs> now, everybody, let me just say, if there's anything you need, please let me know. I'm here for you. Just call me Hetty. Herman, everything going all right? Any problems you have, personal or professional, my office door is always open. Hetty, what are you doing? Be nice, I'll get the job eaten before I shut up and don't blow it for me. I'll nail your ass to the wall. <laughs> you, Herman. <laughs> ah, anything else you need, I'll just be in my office. Look, Mr. Bracken's job is in jeopardy, and it's our fault. I say we go to Hetty and Louise and appeal to the goodness within them. Any objections? No? Good. <laughs> I could get used to this. Hetty, I do have a problem. Can we talk in your office? I can't understand anything. I didn't mean any of that crap I was saying. I need to talk to you, Hetty. Louise, you too, please. <laughs> Research. Our head is busy right now, but I can answer anything that she can. Uh-huh, that is a tough one. <laughs> what do you do for a living? 
elementary school teacher? Then the answer to your question is no. Hetty will not go out with you. Herman, how could you be so stupid? What are we going to do now? I mean, let's face it. He can be a little gruff at times. What's wrong with you, Herman? You just fall off the turnip truck? Hetty, go easy on Herman. After all, he is from Ohio. <laughs> What are you saying? That everyone from Ohio is some sort of backwoods rube? Well, no. Well, yeah. <laughs> I think the damage can be undone if we all march up to Waterton's office together and make clear our unified support for Mr. Bracken. Are you nuts, Herman? Waterton's chairman of the board. We'll never get an appointment to see him. We'll just bust into his office without one. We'll stand there side by side and say, we stand behind Mr. Bracken 100%. Now, come on, damn it. Let's go. Wish me luck. <laughs> Hi, I'm from research downstairs. We set up some evaluations. I'm afraid I need them back. Sorry, Mr. Waterton is looking at them right now. I don't have an appointment, but I have to speak with Mr. Waterton right away. Will you just wait right there and I'll convene the entire board of directors. Where are you from, Ohio? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I am. Now look, Mrs. Uh... Miss. Miss Cracknick. I see. You see? What do you see? That I'm a single woman who's been working for the same man for the past 30 years? I bet you think I've secretly been hoping that someday he would leave his wife and recognize the fact that all this time he's really loved me. That's what you think, isn't it? Actually, uh, that hadn't occurred to me, no. Oh. Well, never mind, then. <laughs> Look, you seem like a nice kid, but you've got no more chance of seeing Mr. Waterton than I've got of, of, uh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. No, it's not your fault. Hi. Well, look who it is. What happened? Did you fire yourself? I can't get us into the office. Ah, and you want me back, do you? Yes. I've come to realize how much I need you. Well, what the hell took you so long? You were crazy over here, lying around, doing nothing. Sorry, big fella, but I'm back in business. I hate to leave you like this. ba ba da ba -bo. Oh, baby, baby. Oh, baby, baby. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Miss Cracknick, where's my barber? I don't know, sir. He should have been here by now. Well, send him in as soon as he gets here, will you? Yes, sir. Hey, you're Mr. Waterton's barber, aren't you? How would you like to make a quick hundred bucks? We came out of retirement for this, a stupid stunt. I depend on you to be the intelligent one. How do you think this makes me feel? Aren't you still fired? <laughs> yes, I'm panicking for the pure love of it. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm late. Hi, I'm here to cut your hair. Hey, you're not the regular guy. No, no, he was sick today. Well, you better damn well do as good a job as he does. You did it! We're in the office! What do we do now? We pretend to cut his hair while we look for the evaluations. Ah! My God, what is that? Well, that's just a... a chemical for cleaning scissors. I'd like to put it on the hair first so I can clean while I cut. Wait, 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 what are you doing? You're supposed to give me a scalp massage first. Oh, right, right. I think it's going very well. Aside from the chemical spill on his head. Fine, so he close his scalp to swimmers. Stop worrying and clean scissors. How bad can it be? Uh, forget the massage. Just cut my hair. I have evaluations to read. No, oh, my eyes. What are you? Oh, God, just let, let that soak for a while. Oh. Hey, well, why don't you let me read the evaluations to you? Yeah, good idea. Mr. Waterton, Paul Bracken is here. Send him in. Give me that. <laughs> Come in, Bracken. Have a seat. <laughs> I was just about. What happened to my barber? Hey, Sweeney Todd, get up here and finish. <laughs> Bracken, are you making eyes at my barber? No, sir. I was just admiring his work. He's not my regular guy. No kidding. Let's see. Where was I? Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. I was just about to read your evaluations. Now, let's see. This looks pretty good, I think. Louise Fister says she thinks of you as a father. 
Uh, here's one from Hetty Newman. She seems to appreciate your taste in ties. <laughs> here's one from uh, Herman Brooks. <laughs> Herman says... Wait! Wait, I have to explain something because I am Herman Brooks and this is my evaluation. You had my barber write you an evaluation? <laughs> I'm not a barber, sir. I work in the research room with Mr. Brack, and I ran into your barber outside, and I paid him to let me do this because I, I had to talk to you. What's so important that it's worth losing your job for? Mr. Bracken's job, sir. I, I had to tell you that I didn't really mean it when I wrote in the evaluation that Mr. Bracken is gruff. Why not? He is gruff. Yeah, but when someone wrote that Mr. Murtaugh was impatient, you fired him. Well, I fired him because he's totally incompetent. The man can't even make a decent hot dog. <laughs> has nothing to do with evaluations. Do you believe everything you hear? I'm sorry, sir. I'm from Ohio. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Waterton, let me just say that Herman here is a good worker. Yes, I am. And a good man. Well, thank you, sir. Well, he's certainly loyal. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, Bracken, what is it you wanted to see me about? Well, I wanted to tell you I've decided to stay in the research department. You have? Mr. Waterton, you once said that your magazines are the most factually correct in the business. I'm responsible for that, and I'm damn proud of it. To tell you the truth, I love what I do. This is quite an opportunity. Maybe for someone else. I realized it wasn't the job. It was the offer that meant so much to me. Well, Paul, I'm glad we'll still have you down in research. Thank you, sir. I think I learned something. I can't do it alone. Each and every one of us has a function in this mind. We need your intelligence, your passion, my sweetness. Who gets the margarita? Me. Now beat it. <laughs> Bracken, before you kill me, you may not believe this, but I, I was just trying to help. Herman, you may not believe this, but I appreciate it. I'm sorry, sir. No harm done. Brooks, give me a mirror. <laughs> I don't like it. He's not your average cop. But then again, New York isn't your average city. Dave McCall again, and here's a piece of advice that my dad's been giving me for years. It's get a life. With Chris Elliott, it's up next on WWCP Fox TV 8. In the January Man, tomorrow on Fox Night at the Movies. Now... Stay tuned for Get a Life, followed by Charlie Hoover.